Yo, what's happening? It's Mikey. If you are interested in making a podcast, I cannot recommend Spotify for Podcasters enough. Dude, it is so freaking easy. Seriously, Spotify for Podcasters lets you create and then distribute your podcast, and you can even earn money from it, man. And you don't need any fancy equipment. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can just start creating today. And you can do video podcasts, too, like I do. Just download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started today this episode of the podcast is sponsored by higher elevation higher elevation.com delivering high quality cannabis to sacramento and the bay area i had some of the canna as a canna nano i think is how you say canna nana at canna 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 nana nana canna nana 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 i'm sorry i'm dumb i had some of the canna nano edibles from higher elevation holy crap dude believe it or not i'm telling you right now these are the best edibles i've ever had in my entire life you have to try these i'm not exaggerating they're super super good check out this last week's weekly weed review to hear more about these edibles and learn about them and see if it's something that you might be interested in uh and and and, and, and plus you can learn about all the goods that i get from higher elevation because they also sponsor the weekly weed review hit up higher elevation.com higher elevation.com but use promo code mikey and you get 20% off. Higher elevation.com. All sites, please stand by. Channel 1. Communication switching to Channel 1. All right, here it comes. Be ready. Switch control to manual override. Awaiting confirmation of the video feed. Countdown is running at 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The Mikey Podcast. All right, and welcome back to the exciting world of me. This is the Mikey Podcast, and if you're not a fan of news, weird shit, and conspiracies, this might not be the place for you, especially today, because it is going to get very weird. I had a pretty interesting week. A lot of things went on in the news, which we're going to try to avoid some of that shit this week, because God, you see the news enough. You see it on social media. You see it on the news. You see it and you hear it in the radio. You know, other podcasters, all these other fucking things. I don't want to do that this week because the news is depressing. Everything is terrible. But I did have a good week myself, at least. I went over to Six Flags with the family, and that was a great fucking time. I will tell you this. It was dead. We went to Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. It's, Bay, it's over in the Bay Area in California. For those of you not in uh, California, you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But you know what a Six Flags is. It's an amusement park. It's awesome. It's a good time. But it was dead. There was, like, nobody there. I mean, there was people, but it was, like, nobody there. We didn't have to wait for any rides, which is awesome because waiting in line for a ride on a hot day fucking sucks. But we got to go on some rides multiple times. We had a great, great time. But I bring this up because I want to brag about something. This is one of the coolest things that's happened to me. I was standing in line to get a drink, and some dude... Random guy, never seen before, looks over and says, hey, man, I love your podcast. I was like, what? Completely blown away by that. I get, like, I, all right, again, not, not to brag, but I mean, I do, I get recognized at the grocery store or, you know, we're out, you know out here in Sacramento and Northern California area all the time for the radio show that I'm on, which makes sense. Sure. It's a big radio show. People like it. So fine. I get understand, but I've never really got someone come up to me and said, hey, man, I love your podcast. That was awesome. I appreciate that. I appreciate this the, the support. Uh, it, so 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 thanks, man. I mean, dude, you caught me completely off guard. That was cool. So, I mean, for some perspective, like Six Flags is is an hour away from where I live, you know, and, and from where anywhere where I do any of my stuff. So like, that, that who is this guy? I don't know who he is. It's in Six Flags in Vallejo. Like I said, technically the, the Bay Area. So, dude, if you're listening right now, thanks, man. Like I said, I appreciate your support. I love when people come up to me and say hi. I really do. I think it's nice. I appreciate the support. It, it makes me feel good. It makes, you know, p p people come up and say hi about the radio show, like I said, all the time. And feel free to do that. If you ever see me out in public, go right ahead because uh, it feels nice. It's a little ego boost. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and uh, speaking of support, I got it. I got to bring something up here. This is kind of cool. Something brand new to the show. If you noticed that over the past few uh, months or so, we've been doing, or I've been doing video episodes. But I got to thank my new sponsor to the show, Riverside FM. These guys are great. This is how I've been able to do these videos and man they make it really really easy so this episode and every episode moving forward it will at least for now is going to be sponsored by riverside fm along with higher elevation i've recently found that riverside fm is probably the best way to record podcasts remotely and do the video stuff it fe the features it offers is unbelievable it's really helping me step my game up with the podcast the video podcasting the remote podcasting interviews and stuff like that that i'm going to be doing in the future and it's all 4k 
which is very, very cool, and some seriously really good qu- uh, audio quality that you can use for free, which is awesome. That's why I like, like, I started using Riverside FM just to test it out and see what it was all about and because it, it was free. But then now I'm like, man, these guys are awesome. So now we're a team and it's all good. But if you want to check out more and you want to know more about these dudes or, or if you're a podcaster and you're looking for a way to kind of step your game up, there's a link in the description. Use my link. It helps the show. Uh, it shows that people are listening and they're like, hey, yeah, good. We're glad we teamed up with Mikey, blah, 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 blah. So Riverside FM, use the link in the thing. Plus, one thing I'd like to point out, too, that I think is really, really cool for those of you who are doing video stuff, you might want to know this. Is when you're recording, you can like you can hit a little marker and it just will mark a clip for you, and then you can save that clip and use it later to promote on social media or whatever to promote your show. So again, cl- uh, link in the description. Use that if you're interested. Riverside FM. Thanks for the support, guys. I really do appreciate it. All right, let's get this party started because this is going to be a very fun, entertaining episode. If you've heard me on the radio or you you know or you've been a listener of the podcast at least and you know that you know I'm I love conspiracies I'm a fan of conspiracies the fake moon landing JFK assassination the new world order 911 I mean pretty much pretty much everything there's seriously a ton of them so so many that honestly that if you if you lose, if you don't have any self control you could really kind of get lost in this world and uh, of conspiracies and let me tell you man it is a fucking dark scary place where these people Live and the, these people that hang out on conspiracy forums and websites and stuff, they are very interesting people. I go to some of these websites myself, like who fucking does that? I mean, if you're into conspiracies, of course, you're gonna go to some of these websites, it's a good time, it's kind of fun. But I'm more of a lurker, you know, what I mean, I lurk these things, I don't really post on any of them because I tend to be skeptical of most conspiracies, but I do like to entertain the ideas of the ones that I think are funny or the ones that are just that interest me or whatever. So while I was scrolling on a certain conspiracy website. Uh, where I get a lot of news from, too, by the way. Uh, while I was scrolling one day, I came across a uh, a pretty accurate list. I want to say li- maybe it's a chart. It's more of a chart. This chart right here, you can see it. It's, a, it's the conspiracy chart. It says conspiracy chart of 2021. But there's a lot on this chart. If you're a subscriber right now, you could probably see that. Subscribe. You should check it out. Um, And, and I found this chart. It was – it's just like it basically breaks down – different conspiracies and it kind of tells you based on what conspiracy you believe in where you kind of fall in reality kind of like where you are on the crazy scale based on the the insane conspiracies you believe in for example like this one right here you can see i have avril Levine up on the screen if you believe that avril Levine committed suicide in 2003 it was replaced by some chick named melissa or even replaced by a clone People are really big into the cloning thing. That's a crazy conspiracy we might have to get to someday. But if you believe that Avril Lavigne did that, I'll have to explain that conspiracy as well. You might be a little crazy. And according to the the crazy conspiracy scale, you are in reality denial. <laughs> according to the scale. So you just you deny reality if you think Avril Lavigne is dead. So but is she? Maybe she's dead. I don't know. I don't know. But there's a lot on this graph. There really is. And some of these I kind of want to go through. I want to break them down. I want to talk about them. I want, I, want, I want to see what's real, what isn't. Maybe because honestly, dude, some of these, some things are actually factual. There are conspiracies that are 100% true. Everybody knows. It's like the government is in fact fucking spying on you. They are. They're spying on you. They're spying on me. They're spying on everybody. Everybody knows this. And according to a recent article, the government, a bunch of different government agencies uh, have, have requested about 50,000 User data. Well, actually, they said about fifty thousand requests for user data to Facebook, thirty thousand to Google, and ten thousand to Apple. Dude, that's a lot, man. What the fuck? Why? Why, why you want all that information about me? You don't even know anything about me. Fuck you, Google. Fuck you, government. You don't need to know that stuff. Back off. Get off my social media, man. It's none of your business. But anyway, and your camera too. Now this is going to sound crazy. Your camera and your computer could be used to spy on you. You probably think I sound paranoid right now, but I'm not, man. I'm I'm just here to try to tell you shit that you should know or at least maybe be aware of. Now there's a link in the description that can explain to you how the whole camera thing works and how it is a fact and it can be used to spy against you. But these are facts. These are real actual conspiracies and then on the other hand there are some conspiracies that are just fucking crazy that there's no way that can be real go back and look at the the chart here uh i can't wait to dive in to find out why the fuck anyone believes hollywood is purposely turning kids gay why would why would they do that or that bill gates wants to depopulate the world why why would that even matter 
Like, who cares? Fuck, maybe he does want to depopulate the world. I don't know. Maybe Gil, maybe maybe Bill Gates is is working with the governments around the world and pharmaceutical companies to kill off billions of people and keep the population under five hundred billion in perpetual balance with nature. Hey, you remember last week's episode? Didn't the Georgia Guidestone say something like that? That was kind of fucking weird, right? You have to go back and listen to last week's episode though to get that man. But maybe Bill Gates destroyed the Georgia Guidestones. I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he did it because he didn't want anybody to know his plans. That's got to be what it is. So as last week, I was trying to understand why would somebody want to destroy the, the, the Georgia Guidestones. It didn't make any sense. Nobody even knows who the fuck built them. It's probably Bill Gates. He probably built them and destroyed them. That's it. Bill Gates fucking did it. He destroyed the Georgia Guidestones. Or did he? I don't know. I doubt it. But maybe. I'm not sure. Possibly. But probably not since I just fucking made it up, man. It's not real. There's no way he could have fucking did that. But I don't know. Maybe. Well, guess we'll find out together because maybe we'll dive into that too. But hey, now would be the perfect time for you to dive into that stash from Higher Elevation. Hopefully you got that 20% off because things are going to get weird. And by the way, this is another one of those episodes you're going to want the video for. Like, I understand it's podcasting, but trust me, man, video is where it's at. And plus, there's all kinds of stuff you're missing out on, pictures and things that I'm posting that you need to see. It makes sense. I'll try to describe these things for you, but you, you should probably get the, the, the video. It's, it's available exclu- exclusively to subscribers on Spotify. Hit that link in the description below or go to MikeyPodcast.com. It's two ninety nine a month, 37 cents an episode, less than 10 cents a day. You get access to all the videos, the Mikey Podcast, the weekly weed review, some other exclusive content and more things that, are, that I'm working on that are coming. But as always, don't forget, I will always do this. The audio podcast will always be always be free. Trust me, though, you're really going to want to start watching the videos. As time goes on, it's it's only going to get better. And my ultimate goal is to never change the price. So if you get locked in now, I mean, who knows? It may go up someday. But if you get locked in now, your price will always be two ninety nine. So go ahead and sign up, and I'll just keep adding more and more content and more and more features, and it'll be totally worth it. Again, the link is in the description. Or go to MikeyPodcast.com. All right, the conspiracy chart. The conspiracy chart. Let's see. Which one should I pick? Should I go hella crazy right off the bat? Just dive right in? Should we should we talk about baby eaters and QAnon? Or should we do something lighter? Something smaller to start off with? Fuck it. Let's go crazy, man. Let's get let's just get stupid. Remember 2020? That was a wild fucking year, dude. Shit was crazy so many things happened that year i i did an entire episode on 2020 you have to be a subscriber to get access to those past episodes but it's a good one you should go check it out so many things were done obviously we had the covid pandemic which kicked off uh it kicked the entire year off in in january then it seemed to lead to a fucking year of complete madness and they tried to impeach trump on charges that he asked ukraine to investigate former vice president joe biden and his and his son hunter which if you think about it, he was fucking right to ask them to do that. God, I don't even want to get into that shit, but my God, the Brandons love Ukraine. Anyway, Trump was ultimately acquitted on that. Uh, the pandemic triggered a stock market to crash, like huge, huge crash. The Dow Jones suffered its worst single day loss drop ever in history. And we've been struggling ever since to come back. And as a matter of fact, the stock market's doing real shitty right now as well. The brand, the Brandon regime has not done anything to fix that. We had the BLM protests. Uh, where almost every single major city in America was being burned. We had riots, people going fucking crazier. But then things got got crazier at that time. Shit started getting really fucking weird, you know? And, and I'm not even kidding. I don't know if you remember this, but there were rumors going around that Kim Jong-un, the, the supreme, the Taco Bell supreme leader of North Korea, that he died. You guys remember that? I'm not even sure how those rumors started. But he helped fuel those the speculations where he didn't like that he was either sick or dead because he didn't show up at some some party celebrating his grandfather, Kim Il Sung. I think that's his name. Whatever. It doesn't matter what his name is. Because he didn't show up. And because he didn't show up, people were like, oh, my God, the Supreme Leader is dead. The Nacho Supreme Leader is gone. But he reemerged like 20 days later. And, and, and there was like photos of him or whatever. And uh, but people didn't believe that it was real either. People South, South Korean officials were like, no, nah, that shit's fake. Those are fake. Those, he's not real. He's in a vegetative state. He's dead. Then if you didn't think that was crazy enough, shit gets even crazier. When you find out about Ghislaine Maxwell, she gets arrested. Jeffrey Epstein's madam. She was nabbed uh, July 2nd, 2020 on sex trafficking charges. 
uh, while she was like staying in some 156 acre estate in New Hampshire, some like living it up in luxury where she got that. I don't know. Probably from the Clintons. I'm not exactly sure. But look at this couple right here. Look at how cute they are. Oh, Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Jeffrey's got his arm around her, holding her close to his face, looking like he's smelling her hair or something. Like, what the, what the fuck is up with that, by the way? Who's with these weirdos smelling hair? Is that a thing? Like, even Brandon does it. There he is, smelling this lady's hair, but she looks happy about it. Anyway, Jizz, as I like to call her. Uh, she's been found guilty of sex trafficking. I'm sure you should know that by now. I recommend subscribing to the podcast, too, and going back and listening to those past episodes about her family and her and all the other shit and all the weird shit that she was connected to. Because, dude, Ghislaine Maxwell's shit, that stuff is, that whole thing is crazy. There's some fuckery afoot with her and her father and Mossad. And look at this picture of her, actually. Damn. Is it kind of, is it fucked up to say that, God, I'm going to, this is horrible. She was kind of hot back in the day. Look at her. Google her, man. Don't blame me. It's not my fault. Ghislaine Maxwell was attractive. But when she was younger, don't judge me. But anyway, that's very fucking crazy stuff. I had to do multiple episodes on that. Uh, and I also did the trial updates, too. So if you really, really, really want to dive in and, and, and learn all about the fucking depravity of Jeffrey Epstein and her and the people that they were connected to, subscribe. It's really some interesting shit. Uh, but back to this in 2020 here, the, the, this brings me to the the biggest, weirdest thing to come to 2020. And that's what this episode is going to be about, to come out of 2020. And I blame my Facebook memories for this, by the way, because they reminded me of it. And you should follow me on social media. This is MikeyPodcast.com. And I'm talking about the biggest, weirdest thing to come out of 2020 ever was the Wayfair sex trafficking scandal. Do you remember this? <laughs> This was wild. Did you even hear? But some people don't even know what this is. I bring it up like, what are you talking about? Wayfair was was sex trafficking? Dude, this was crazy. I swear. And honestly, this is what led me down the rabbit hole of sex trafficking and, and what that's all about. It's I had no idea how huge it was. And it really is a very big deal. Sex trafficking is a multi-billion dollar a year industry. But was Wayfair somehow involved? What the fuck is Wayfair, by the way? Anyway, some people don't even know what Wayfair is. Wayfair is an online e-retailer that sells pretty much furniture and home goods mostly. But really, it's all just a bunch of overpriced shit. It really, really is. But here's the gist of the story. Wayfair, again, already overpriced stuff, was selling some shit at completely outrageous prices. Like, I'm talking about pillows and cabinets and, and mirrors and things for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Like, look at this cabinet right here. There's some, this is not this is not an industrial grade cabinet. There's nothing special about this cabinet. It is ten thousand dollars, ten thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars. You can get it for the low price of eight hundred thirty eight hundred sixty seven dollars a month. But that seems odd, right? That's a that's who the fuck is going to buy a ten thousand dollar list? This is not even it's only got one one drawer on it. Ten thousand dollar fucking cabinet. Get out of here. Is it weird? Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's not. So, like, so what? So what if some stupid motherfucker is dumb enough to pay that? Someone has this amount of money. They just want to spend $10,000 on a cabinet, right? Who cares? Whose problem is it? What's the problem with it? It's their money. Let people do whatever the fuck they want, right? That's the thing. Let them do whatever they want. Well, here's the thing with that. Someone on the internet found that just a little bit suspect. Just they're like, that's a little sus for me, dude. $10,000 cabinets. I got to dig deeper into this. And that's exactly what they did. And here's what Princess... 1987 Princess Peach, I'm sorry, Princess Peach 1987 posted this on the internet. And this really is what started the whole Wayfair fucking selling kids thing. And we blame Princess Peach. But here's what she wrote. She wrote, is it possible Wayfair is involved in human trafficking with their WFX utility collection? Or are these just extremely overpriced cabinets? And then she puts in parentheses, note the name of the cabinets. This makes me sick to my stomach if it's true. And then she added a screenshot which if you're subscribed, you can see right now, uh, from Wayfair's website featuring four, uh, four storage cabinets, products named Nyria, Yuritsa, Samaya, and Olivia. I think that's how you say it, or Olivia, but it's spelled with an A. Each one of these cabinets costs between 12000 and 15000 fucking dollars. Are you kidding me? About $15,000. Well, 14, 14, 14, 449, whatever. Who the fuck cares? That's too much money. No one's paying $10,000 for a storage cabinet. That's ridiculous. Who's doing that? Nobody. Now, she said note the names on the cabinets, which you can see here again. 
uh, because these names actually seem to match some names of some missing children, apparently. Uh, apparently. I'll explain that a little bit here in, in a minute. So from there, from her posting this, this then spread to Reddit and other social media sites where more and more people were digging in and connecting dots that aren't really connected that have nothing to do with this but that's what the internet does the internet connects dots so with that in mind someone found a review for a fireproof safe on wayfair from 2016 from walnut creek california why that matters is because in walnut creek california this is a city where a human uh, a human trafficking and child porn operation was shut down that led the authorities to a wider sex trafficking ring earlier that year in 2020 so Based on somebody's review in 2016 that happened in, in a place that somebody in, 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 in Walnut Creek, California, bought this thing. It left a review. Somebody somehow said that this somehow connects to sex trafficking. I bet a lot of people in, in Walnut Creek, California, have bought stuff from, from Wayfair. That doesn't mean they're selling babies in fireproof safes. What the fuck is wrong with you people? But anyway, it gets weirder from there, man. It goes on. That dot, there was no dot to connect, but they somehow connected that dot. Uh, if that makes sense, I don't know. But whatever. It, it, it just, it, like I said, it gets even fucking weirder. Listen, when, um, because people kept digging and people kept finding more and more information. And they found out that if you take the SKU number from those items, for example, the items that I just had just shown you. If you take those items from Wayfair's website and, and search those numbers on the Yandex which is Russia's Google, basically. So if you just copy those numbers, the SKU numbers, and then pasted them in the Yandex and search those numbers, you, you would get results of pictures of, of uh, like boys and girls in bathing suits and like doing gross child modeling stuff. Like it was not good. It's not good at all. I'm not even going to, I don't even want to show you the pictures. I mean, it's not like nudity or anything. It was just weird, made me uncomfortable. I don't like it. Don't do that. It's no good for you. You're not going to be happy about it. And I know this all sounds fucking crazy, right? Wayfair selling kids. That's kind of a lot of information there. There's cabinets that are ten thousand dollars. Like cabinets named after people that are missing, and and then and then you got you know the Yandex thing. So let me try to make all. Let me try to make sense for this. Uh, to make sense to all this for you. It's like first of all, you, human trafficking, as I said, is a very very real thing. It is a very well known problem. It's a very big deal. We also know that it happens on a very large scale with very wealthy, powerful individuals involved. So what's being suggested here is basically this. Wayfair was involved in a global human trafficking system where if you're in the know, you could go to their website, find overpriced items with human names, search the SKU on Yandex and see if that person was what you wanted. Or and from there, then you would be able to like purchase that item or person or whatever. That's basically it in a nutshell. You see it on you see the overpriced cabinet for $10,000 named Yolanda or whatever. And then you're like, oh, okay. So I clearly, because I'm in the know and I know what's up. Yolanda is a missing person. That, or y Yolanda is the name of a person of this person who's going to cost me $10,000. Let me take this SKU number, search it over on the index. Oh, here's what this person looks like. Yes or no. Do I want this person? I don't know. And then you buy it. <laughs> you, just, you, just buy, you just buy a kid off fucking Wayfair. Right. All that sounds crazy, though, man. It's all crazy. And I'm sure you're like, why would Wayfair do this in the open like that? This obviously this isn't real. Blah, 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 blah. Of course it's not. Or maybe it is. I don't know. But the stuff took over the Internet. It's all over. like it's, it's on and up on websites and news. The news is reporting on it. It's, it's happening everywhere. Like it, people are talking about it. So obviously Wayfair had to come out and, and say something. And they denied everything because, of course, they're not going to get on. They're not going to put on a press release like, yeah, you know, we fucking sell kids. It's, that's. This is what yeah, that's what we do now. Now, of course, we're not going to do that. But this is what they said. They said there is, of course, no truth to the claims. This is from a spokeswoman, Susan, whatever the fuck her name is. Nobody cares. Said the products in question are industrial grade cabinets that are accurately priced. OK, so that's it. End of story. Done. That's it. It's over. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Wayfair is not selling kids and that's it. It's over. Have a good week. No, that's not it. That's not at all it because it got a little weirder. I know I keep saying that it just keeps getting weirder. It just keeps getting weirder. What's going on? Why do they keep doing weird shit? Well, 
Wayfair then removed the products from their website. It's gone. After claiming that all was good and that there was nothing to see here, folks, just move along, they removed them. Why? Why did they take them down? Well, they claimed that they weren't accurately priced after they just said they were accurate. Well, you mean to tell me this cabinet really isn't 15 grand? It looks like a fit. I'm just kidding. That's crazy, though. So they took them down, which really at that point only made the conspiracies even worse because then someone posted Wayfair literally deleted the cabinets that were up from 10 that were up more than $10,000 to hide their sex trafficking scandal. The Internet busted a frontline trafficking operation right here in front of our eyes. Share, 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 share. Open your eyes, people. This is bigger than you all know. Hashtag Pizzagate. Now I'm going to probably get flagged for saying Pizzagate, but whatever. Look at this. Here's right here. You got a $12,000 WFX utility cabinet, Samaya. Oh, what's this? Who's missing? 17-year-old Samaya Mummin from Ohio of all places. Oh, here's another one. Yuritsa storage cabinet, $13,000. What's this? Yuritsa Castro missing. You can get her for thirteen grand on Wayfair. I don't think that's true, though. So again, here's the, you see the photos. If you're a subscriber, you can see these and the, the, how the cabinets, uh, the, the the name of the cabinets match the name of the missing children that they were connected to. So here we have seemingly actual evidence of Wayfair sex trafficking, according to the internet. All right, people connected the dots and whatever. And there you go. You got cabinets under the, that are the name of of a person who's missing, and you pay ten grand, you can get that person. Now you own that person. Right? And everyone, everyone's just like, meh. You know, you got a small niche group of people who are like, what the fuck? This is crazy. And then you got some people who are entertaining the idea like, well, maybe, maybe. I mean, sex trafficking is real. Maybe Wayfair is in it. But you got everyone else in the world just like, meh. Except for one couple. One couple in Arizona. See, this story does not end here, folks. It gets deeper. They, like... Other people were unhappy with Wayfair's response of, no, we're not doing it. And that's supposed to just, you're supposed to just accept that as the answer. No, we're not doing it. Okay. Sorry, Wayfair, but then we're not going to accept that as your answer. So this couple helped spread this story too. They actually went and tried to purchase a $17,000 desk from Wayfair. And then even better, they documented the whole thing. Yeah, these two right here. This is, I've watched all their videos too, but this, this, is, this was pretty wild. So here, this story is kind of strange and I have to break this down for you. So here, so what happened with these two is, is their goal as explained in their video was to prove that human trap, to prove the human trafficking theory by revealing that the company's not actually delivering these high price products to buyers are actually delivering children of some sort. And they, they weren't, they, they were delivering humans in cabinets, not cabinets. Or maybe you'd get the cabinet and a human in it. What if you accidentally ordered a cabinet and it came with a baby? Like, oh, here you go. I got a cabinet. What the, why is there a baby in here? Who put the baby in the cabinet? No, you're not supposed to. Hey, but what if somebody accidentally set a baby down at Wayfair and they got put in the cabinet and it got shit? Like, who's feeding these babies, by the way? Like, how long does it take to get from wherever it's coming from? What if I order something that's from the other side of the world? I ordered a $10,000 cabinet. I want there to be a baby. And who's going to feed the baby in the cabinet? You know, the baby's going to die. Then I just spent $10,000 and I don't even get a child. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> the hell am I talking about? I don't know. Anyway, they were, they, that was their point. They were trying to prove that they were actually delivering humans and, 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 well, not really. They, there's probably more like, chances are, if anything, if, if Wayfair was doing anything, chances are more than likely they were just some sort of middleman, some sort of money laundering thing. But this couple wanted to prove something and they proved literally nothing. But it does get weird, so let me tell you this. So they make the purchase, okay, and they go through the process. They're buying a $17,000 desk. They go through the process. They click, 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 here goes all these other things. And they get to basically a point where you can't go any further. They couldn't really finish the sale. And then they got a phone call. They got a weird phone call from Wayfair Customer Service. This person said they represented Wayfair Professional. Don't know what the fuck that is. But maybe you do. I, I don't know. But this person offered them a free Wayfair professional account. And this account is apparently offered to high-end purchasers. And apparently they get access to a client manager. And then all of your deals, the things that you buy that you buy are now handled one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have to go through the website. You just kind of handle it one-on-one -on -one with, this, with this client manager. That's a little fucking weird. 
considering everything else that's going on, right? That's a little odd. But this couple, I guess, asked way too many questions, and eventually they were hung up on. So they got nowhere with this person. And at this point, that's kind of all I got. They literally, I have no more information for you. And here's even where it gets, this is where things start to get even weirder. It's like weird on top of weird on top of weird. This whole fucking thing is weird. Wayfair selling babies. Weird. But the whole story just keeps getting weirder and weirder and weirder. Because, first of all, if they did get the thing, if they were going to buy the, the cabinet and the charges went through, they were just going to dispute the charges with the credit card company. That was their plan. Dispute the charges that way. They don't have to pay for something. Like, Who the fuck's going to pay seventeen thousand dollars for a desk? But that's, but that's all. That's it. That's where their story ended. There was no more updates. There was no more information. They their story ended at being hung up on by the Wayfair specialist who was calling to give them one on one service. All of their videos were deleted, and they never said another thing about it. If that's not, I mean. <laughs> Maybe I'm looking too much into this, which I probably am because I'm crazy, but that's weird, right? All got all this stuff on there, and then you get this couple who's like gung-ho about trying to figure out what the fuck's going on because they took this shit very seriously, at least in their videos. They deleted everything. Gone. Never said another word about it. Why? Well, I got to tell you, I'm fucking curious. That's why I do this podcast. That's why I ask so many questions. So I went and I fucking stalked them, and I found them on Instagram. I found their Instagram pages, and I sent them each a message. Because I want, I have questions. I want to know what's going on. I want to know why they stopped talking about it. I want to know what they found out. If they found out anything, did they get their desk? What happened? I have questions, but I haven't gotten a response. I sent them both a fucking message, no response. If I do get a response from them, you will be the first to know, hell, I'll do a special episode, even if it's just a couple of minutes, to, to give you an update on what the hell happened with this, this couple from Arizona. But I told them I'm a radio host. I'm a podcaster. I made sure they know they knew I wasn't like trying to poke fun at them or anything like that. And that and or I, that I you know I believed in them. And and hell, I believed part of this story in in the first place anyway. So I kind of wanted to talk to them about it. But the way they just kind of stopped their stuff and and never updated anything else again, I found that a little bit odd. Because, like I said, they were very serious about this. My fiance and I watched their videos. We were all in. We wanted to see how this shit played out. Nothing. Got yeah, nothing. That was it. And speaking of nothing, this theory, this whole thing, has actually never been proven false. Like, they've, it's never been proven that they weren't sex trafficking, but it's also never been proven that they were. Now, I do think that there was enough, like, circumstantial type of evidence to at least look into it some, but I mean, that's just my opinion. But if you Google, if you Google this information and you Google about it and want to know information about it, you'll find plenty of articles that say it's been debunked and that it's untrue. And it probably is. But the thing is, is that there is, if you click on these articles and you read them, there is literally no proof proving that they didn't do it. There's nothing saying that Wayfair is not, in fact, other than Wayfair saying that they're not doing it. That's it. Basically, basically every article just takes Wayfair's word for it and then makes fun of the people who ever looked into it or talked about it ever. Like making jokes about kids in, in shipping containers and stuff, which I was just doing, sure, yeah, but but that's not what this actually was. It's not what this was about. Like this was more trying to figure out maybe if, if, if uh, Wayfair was more like a middleman in laundering money. It didn't even, it could have even just been, not necessarily sex trafficking. They could just been money laundering in general for criminals, which is a very common thing that happens on the internet. And they kind of do do it out in the open. I said do do. They kind of do it out in the open. So it's like hiding in plain sight type thing. So <laughs> sending kids really in, in shipping containers was never really speculated. So all the jokes that went around, it was just people being a-holes. Uh, but there were some explanations, and I kind of want to get into that a little bit. Again, nothing really solid, nothing really proving that they were or weren't. But there were some explanations to maybe how, why the prices were so high. So one explanation was very simple because it makes no sense for them to do this and it has no supporting evidence. That was one of the days. Well, I mean, sure, it doesn't make any sense, but maybe it does. I don't know. Maybe these people are into selling humans. Maybe it's something they've been doing forever. You know, maybe, maybe uh, where Wayfair's headquarters is, is in a town that was basically built and funded by the Rothschilds and the people who own Wayfair are locked into that. Google it. Look into it. I'm just saying it could be a thing. 
I don't know. I'm just dropping breadcrumbs, people. Who just pick them up. Pick up the breadcrumbs and drop, and you'll figure it out. That's one explanation. Maybe it doesn't make sense. There's no supporting evidence. But I gave you, there's a little bit of evidence. A little bit. Circumstantial, maybe. But the names, the prices, the way, weird Wayfair phone call, all a little weird. Oh, by the way, to be fair, and I wanted to mention something about one of the, the girls that, was, that went missing. Um, one of the girls' names that was used on the cabinet and it went viral. The, that girl's name, uh, was, she's actually, in fact, alive and was not kidnapped. She came out on YouTube or some social media, whatever, and said, hey, I'm here. I'm alive. Leave me alone. Stop fucking with my family. Apparently, they were being harassed. But no one actually believed her. I want you to know that. No, nobody ever actually believed this girl because anybody could have said they were her. Anybody who's like, oh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm this girl who is missing. I don't think they had a picture. Maybe they did. I don't know. But nobody believed her. Maybe she was being held against her will. Like, get on the fucking internet and say this right now so people stop looking at Wafer for selling babies to the Clintons, which I just made up. But it probably is true. Uh, another person said, in what world does it make sense to handle child trafficking through a public website? Well, I kind of addressed that. It's been explained through the, the fact that it wasn't really probably could have not been. <laughs> what did I just say? It may not have been sex trafficking and more along the lines of money laundering. And if you know anything about the elite, they like to hide in plain sight, dude. That is NWO 101. Come on. Pay attention. Wake up. <laughs> Listen to the Mikey podcast. I saw, you'll learn a lot from, from this. This is the smartest episode, or wait, the smartest show on the, on the internet. Something like that. Uh, but one explanation kind of does make sense. Actually, two. But I'm going to get to those. And let's see how you feel about these. Apparently, vendors, according to somebody, I don't know if this is true, vendors jack up prices in items that are out of stock on these e-retailer websites. Because removing the listing uh, means you have to relist later, which is more work than toggling the price. So, uh, Or that the, the vendor settings things say something's out of stock. It negatively impacts their search rankings once things go back in stock. So they don't want that to happen. So, okay. So they just jack the price up. Like, okay, no one's going to buy this fucking cabinet for $15,000 because that's ridiculous. So, but we'll, it'll at least keep us up there in the high rankings. Okay. That makes a little sense. That's a good theory. Um, and, 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 and I know that, that uh, it's been stated that like Amazon and Walmart, they do things like that. So maybe I can't prove it one way or the other. I don't know. That's just, that's one guy's theories, but here's someone else who says it has absolutely nothing to do with this stock rather than an automated pricing algorithm. It says there's dozens of data points that, that are used to input and output a price. If a certain data if certain data points are missing or entered incorrectly, it could cause the output to be significantly lower than Wayfair would want to sell the thing for, resulting in a loss. So imagine like a ten thousand dollar item being accidentally listed for ten bucks. So the system recognizes when some data issues are present and then bumps the price up to some outrageous price that where if it does sell, which it probably wouldn't, Wayfair would not lose any money. They would actually make money. So that's just kind of what it is. So if, if, if an item is out of stock on Wayfair, which I've seen, it, it, it says it's out of stock. It just, that's it. It doesn't force vendors to relist anything. So that kind of negates the first theory, but they both kind of make sense. I think those are two reasons. Those two reasons alone are good explanations as to why the prices are so high. But a lot of people don't accept those as answers and question it. Still, questions still remain. Basically, this theory was never proven true or false. But it did lead to a mass awakening of people waking up to uh, uh, the fucked up world that we live in and the amount of sex trafficking that's going on all around us. All the human trafficking that is happening here everywhere every day. It led me to fall down a rabbit hole and realize that I live in a fucking hub for this stuff. Northern California is one of the hottest spots in the world for human trafficking. I don't understand it, but it is. It ended, I ended up at Save the Children marches. Me and my fiance, my family, my friends, we ended up going out there. I was hosting roundtables with local law enforcement and FBI to learn about ways to, to spot tra uh, human trafficking and how you can help and how you can deal with it. It's all kinds of shit. If you actually, if you want to learn more, there's a link in the description uh, for, for ways that you can help fight human trafficking. And I think you should read that. I think it's really important. That's definitely one of the biggest problems with our society today is human trafficking. And I can't say for sure if if Wayfair was, was selling babies, but maybe. 
Just go click that link and, and, and you'll you'll learn more. And I think it's important that you know that stuff. It's good. But was Wayfair selling babies and kids and cabinets to rich people all around the world for thousands of dollars? Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? But the next question is, where on the chart do you fall if you believe that? Well, let's look at the chart. Wayfair sex trafficking falls into the little yellow section right here, as you can see. And you are the anti-Semitic point of no return. You are at the anti-Semitic point of no return if you believe that Wayfair was... I don't know how that's anti-Semitic. I got to tell you, I'm not sure. But that's where you lie. You are anti-Semitic. You, if, if, if you believe that Wayfair is selling babies, you are at the anti-Semitic point of no return in reality. So it's time for you to unplug and go get some fucking nature. Go outside. Go breathe some oxygen. Take your feet off and go stand in the grass. Connect your energy to the earth because that shit matters. That shit is real. I know I sound crazy when I say that stuff, but trust me, you will feel like a completely person, a completely different person if you do that for a little while. Just don't step any dog poop because that changes everything. Uh, I'm, I'm dead serious. You, if, you, if you go outside and you take your shoes off, because you want to connect with nature and you want to feel the energy of the earth, which again, I recommend, I think is great. But if you're trying to do that and you step in dog poop, you're going to have a bad time. But so again, unplug, go get some nature. That should definitely help you. Don't unplug too much though. Keep listening and watching the Mikey podcast. I'm going to dive into another conspiracy next week and we can try to, try to figure it out. Try to get some answers. See if we can figure out where this shit comes from. Get to the bottom of it, where it started. Is it real? Is it not? I'll try to mansplain it all for you the best way I can. I'm pretty good at mansplaining. <laughs> at least that's what I've been told. Fuck, I don't like that. Uh, if you have a suggestion, you can hit me up, monkeypodcast.com. Uh, go there. There's a link in the description of this podcast. Also, subscribe to this podcast for all the videos and access to the past episodes. Plus, you get exclusive content like the weekly read review and a whole bunch more. Your support is what keeps this show going. I, I appreciate it. I need it. It's what keeps it. Again, I can't do this without you guys. So if you like the show and you want to keep it going, I please subscribe and get access to everything. Um, if you like what you hear, try watching it. You'll like it a lot better, I promise. 10 cents a day. MikeyPodcast.com. Have a great week, everybody. The Mikey Podcast.